Coho Replay Cast, and I just gotta say, absolutely wow! Right now, I have pebbles again. These little tiny stones. <laughs> so if you guys noticed in my last little cast, I mentioned that I was getting a, a new graphics card, and here you go, guys. It came a day later. So special delivery on a GTX 570, and you know what? Thank you, Royal Mail, for being so fa fast and speedy, despite how there's an ash cloud apparently over Scotland <laughs> right now. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thumbs up to Royal Mail, although not for the one time they stole my package. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Anyway, so we have a 1v1 on Angleville today, and it is featuring Imperial Dane. I'm sure you guys know who Imperial Dane is, very popular person on the Co forums, and he is versing oh, do, 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 Men Taiko as the Americans. So, I guess we'll have to see what comes out of this. Um, basically, this is a user submitted. Uh, I have recently updated my status on the channel page, just letting all of you guys know that my submissions from all of you guys is absolutely open right now, and I will try to get to casting your games. So I've actually, unfortunately, not been able to get to people's games recently. Um, I have gotten a lot of user submitted ones, and I feel sort of bad that I haven't been able to put in the same effort so to say and cast those games but then again I was busy but now that obviously I'm freed up and 2.602 is out I will obviously have a lot of time so if you guys want to just send in your games and I will get to hopefully around to, uh, casting them as I've said as in the requirements just 30 minutes or under so I can do loads in a day and maybe release maybe even up to three a day and you know short replays but lots of them anyway so we have Imperial Dan playing as a Panzer Elite, he has his Krad capping away, he also got three PGs, Panzer Grenadiers, and is he going to get another one? That depends, we'll see what on his manpower income, but usually the uh, Panzer Elite like to get four, four Panzer Grenadiers at the start, because it is a usually typical build order, and what do we have? No, he is going for three PGs instead, and he is going to be jumping right to the Kampfgruppe company. So we will have to see what comes out of that. Most likely an infantry half track, probably too early for a mortar. But yeah, like I said, we'll have to see what happens out of that. So Ryan or uh, Imperial Dane is using his Kent crowd to cap away at points. Sometimes in the beginning, some Panzer Elite players like to build two Kent and Krads. Um, by having two Kent and Krads, you can obviously cap away more efficiently because Panzer Grenadiers are no way in shape or form good at capturing points there in fact very 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 slow um, so if you have two cretin cat credits out that obviously helps a lot but then again the panzer elite are very dependent on their um, panzer grenadiers and their tech orders if they go slightly off their tech orders that can be sort of fatal for them um, so you got to be really careful about that so anyway we got uh, mr. Menteco taking over this little building now this building sees a lot of action and in Angleville, and it's a very good place to cut off your opponent. So, by uh, having two rifleman squads here, he's cutting off uh, Imperial Dane entirely. Basically, no points for Imperial Dane at the moment. Although I'm not exactly sure what he's doing at the moment, uh, right here, retreating two squads. That seems kind of excessive. What I actually would have done is not. Uh, be so bold with these riflemen and move them forward on this victory point. I would have actually kept them in the house and when those Panzer Grenadiers were for, uh, coming towards me, I'd probably run this squad that was capturing the manpower point behind this little box, these, uh, this little stack of boxes. And that actually would be a very good defensive position and would be enough to actually hold off against all these Panzer Grenadiers. Now then, left hand side, is there any action going on? Not so much, just basically a little capping war between the Kent and Krad and these little engineers. So we basically have sort of split in the middle. Let's switch on over to the tactical map and see what's happening. We have one VP to the Americans, one VP to Mr. Actually, two VPs to Mr. Imperial Dane. And Dane has his little Gewehr 43 on his Panzer Grenadiers. So, as you guys might have noticed, they did get a bit of a change. Their slow duration has been 
decreased from 20 seconds to 5 seconds and they can suppress now with their ability. So quite interesting, had to see what happens out of that. But likewise, the suppression ability is very good when you want to separate the um, oncoming attack. So usually what Americans like to do is throw in a bit of their riflemen mixed in with flamethrowers. And obviously you got to focus on those flamethrowers because flamethrowers are nasty little buggers. And so by suppressing them, you make your whole job and your whole life a lot easier. Now this American engineer really needs to move a bit because it's kind of obvious that he put down those little pesky mines. I'm sure if, uh, Dane saw that, so maybe he's going to take it out, I'm not exactly sure, we'll have to see. Also another little stray ri rifleman squad, obviously being quite bold. I'm not exactly sure why he's being so, um, mm, I don't know, excessive in his retreating. I suppose he doesn't want to lose his guys, but then again, he's sort of retreating a bit too much. And by doing that, he's sort of losing ground. And as you guys can see, the infantry half-track out of the Kampfgruppe company, along with these Panzer Grenadiers, are going to just move on forward. Now, we do have a bit of riflemen coming in. To see what they can do. Can this infantry half track suppress them? Maybe, probably not in the house anymore. <laughs> you cannot get suppressed in the house. And let's see what's happening with the Panzer Grenadiers. And the Panzer Elite, they have the Panzer Support Command. So infantry, anti-infantry half track coming out. Anti-tank half track. Jeez, absolutely getting muddled up with my words here. I'll try to be a bit more careful. So the anti-tank half track coming out. Setting a flag point right over here, just so it instantly comes out there. Just making the job a lot easier. So we do have um, sticky bombs. We also saw uh, grenades coming out from the Americans as well. So they have both grenades and their stickies. So quite a good combination, really, because the stickies are very good, as you guys can see, at taking out the half track. I think Dane should have been a bit more careful of that and reversed it as soon as these riflemen were getting nearby. But likewise, here we go, a little grenade coming off, and bam, just taking out one little guy. So, very good mixture. What a lot of Americans like to do is sometimes get uh, go for straight for bars. That's totally valid, but then again, the stickies and the grenades are cheap in terms, uh, in uh, relativity compared to the bars. So by having both of those out then you can also um, do a lot of tactical options. So you have a lot of tactical options open in terms of anti-tank and anti-infantry. Especially the Panzer Grenadier since they like clumping up together and when you have those uh, little grenades it makes life a lot easier. So Dane obviously recognizing that there was a, a mine place down there <laughs> just because the engineers were just standing there in such an awkward place and it's kind of easy when um, your opponent is doing something like that that you can tell that they obviously put down some mines. So I believe Dane is going to do something sort of funny here. Um, what Panzer Elite have a sort of problem in doing is actually taking out mines and detecting them. So as you guys can see by having the Panzer Grenadiers nearby and upgraded. They can also detect mines and as you guys saw the light AT half track attacking the ground and bam taking out that little mine. So a big, a big cluster of Americans right here. Pretty much nothing on the field except for this one little stray badly wounded uh, half filled rifleman squad so not much going to come out of this. Obviously retreating and I do like how he's retreating now. This is not excessive in any shape or form. But a big blob of guys here. So what kind of attacking order do we have on these, on the Americans? They have got the triage sensors. They obviously um, are going to invest a lot into their infantry if they do have the triage sensors down. And they also have bars out. So we obviously won't be seeing a fast M8 or anything like that because there is not enough fuel for an M8 just now. Obviously with the stickies, the grenades, the uh, rifle, the bars, that has too much fuel to be thinking about even getting a supply hard at the moment. And so just some sort of capping going on. Obviously the Panzer Grenadiers are quite iffy about even taking on bars at the moment. Without their veterancy, without even a defensive veterancy, they're not going to do that much against um, bars. They're going to get absolutely shredded. And so basically just a, a sort of defensive line being set up. We do have the mines being revealed from Mr. Imperial Dane. 
I'm being taken out again. So this light AT half track doing a very good job at taking out mines. And as you guys notice, the Panzer Grenadiers actually have to stop um, near the mines in order to detect them. They can't just keep on walking and all of a sudden detect them. So what a common thing is, you might be thinking, oh, okay, but that's so many places I could stop on the map. Like, how would I even find all those mines? Well, you have to sort of know the map. In 1v1 especially, there's a very, very hot spots of where mines can be. And if you notice that your opponent is has put down a mine, then it's likely for the rest of the game that they will continue putting on mine, putting down mines. So usually over here in the cross section of the road and over here in choke points, very likely places for mines. And so a bit of skirmishing going on. This one rifleman squad just barely getting away, but his bar is close range, just absolutely tearing up Imperial Dane. He has to retreat, especially when a grenade comes down like that. Even when on the retreat, Imperial Dane taking one casualty from that. So it looks like quite a turn of events. What we saw just earlier, previous to this attack, the Americans being pushed off the map entirely, bringing um, their guys in one massive swoop, managing to actually push back Imperial Dane to his base. So Dane obviously recognizing that he cannot cap on the side since there's so many infantry. He has to use his uh, his little Kettenkrad to keep on going. And the Kettenkrad, wow, did you guys see that? On the move and detecting mines. So I believe that is a point uh, 2.602 change. They, they're actually very good at spotting mines, so well done, Mr. Kettenkrad. Whether Imperial Dane recognized that, I don't believe he would have. So more capping. So here comes uh, Imperial Dane's entire force right here. Three Grenadier squads. I believe another one in the building. The light AT half track. We're losing ground out there. So in terms of tanks right now, Imperial Dane really does not have to worry that much. He, um... Mr. Manteco obviously does not is not going to be getting tanks anytime soon, especially by the reinforcement of his uh, rangers. That's definitely solidifying an infantry strategy. And by no means is that a bad strategy either, because if he has all the anti-tank, if he has the riflemen, then yeah, that's, that's going to be pretty good. The only thing he really needs to be afraid of is the fact that there's a, a light AT half track means that there's the uh, Panzer Support Command and then you might be seeing the um, Panzer IV coming out which as you guys might know or maybe don't know the Panzer IV is a very massive <laughs> uh, infantry killer basically whenever you see that even the Rangers have to be aware of the Panzer IV because um, especially when it's locked down it will do a lot of uh, damage and kills so in terms of anti-tank the Rangers are okay, but if he's going to get more anti-tank, he definitely needs to get more um, Rangers, possibly even think about, thinking about getting uh, getting a motor pole and getting some um, anti-tank guns. But to be honest, that's, uh, that's a bit far away given his state right now. Then again though, the good thing about this strategy about heavy rangers is that they come with their bazookas, two bazookas absolutely free when they're cold on, 400 manpower. And the fact that Benteco has his ra has his uh, riflemen with their stickies will obviously be very good at anti-tank. So if they can get near the Panzer IV, if they can get near the half-tracks, throw on some stickies, immobilize it, then rangers could easily get in there and for the kill. And as we see the Panzer IV support tank coming out this is going to be a bit menacing now Manteco obviously has to be a bit aware about this and a bit afraid in one shot this is what I mean guys one shot a little cluster sort of shell taking out three guys so that's what I mean even if you have one ranger squad that's not going to be enough to take out an infantry support tank and now we have the Fulsham Jaegers coming out so Mr. Imperial Dane has gone for his Luftwaffe. And not a bad choice either. The good thing about the Luftwaffe, as you guys can see, is that they do uh, camouflage. Well, the Fallschirmjägers anyway. But um, the Luftwaffe, when they come out, they actually have the uh, repair ability, advanced repair ability. 
so they can repair the light support infantry tank, no problem. And that's a, sort of a common problem with the Panzer Grenadiers, that they have such a slow repair rate. So by at least having your Luftwaffe out, you can actually repair your tank quite speedily. And it's just always this mixture of units that you guys need. Okay, so here comes another massive swoop of American infantry. It seems like the last few replays that we've done, the Americans seem really keen on just moving everything they have in one massive swoop. But I suppose then again, at least there's some capping going on the left hand side, and we do have another squad up here. Two squads, should I say. And a massive attack just about to begin. What will come out of this? Let's see. Panzer IV support tank obviously recognizing that there's something not good about to happen. Locking itself down, backing away a bit first. Taking a few shots, a few stickies, damaging the engine, down to almost half health. And down to almost a quarter of its health left. That's a lot of damage, but then again, there was so much support supporting um, the support, uh, the Panzer IV. There's a lot of pan Panzer Grenadiers. You had your Foschen Jaegers. You also had your car or your <laughs> Gewehr 43. A lot of anti-infantry capability, let alone the Panzer IV itself. So obviously huge losses, casualties. huge, huge losses for the American at the moment. And this is one of the difficult things about the uh, Americans having, um, or for a heavy infantry strategy, not only the Americans, but any he heavy infantry strategy. Although your survivability of your infantry are very good, obviously you can retreat prior to the whole squad being killed. Um, the unfortunate thing is that you have to reinforce them, so that is a sort of constant sort of... Uh, thing you got to keep aware of the entire game the reinforcement cost you got to be reinforcing obviously spending manpower and if you don't have manpower you can't really do that much so what he really needs mr. Manteco what he really needs is more anti-tank at the moment and he can't get that because he has to reinforce the men that all just died just now the beauty about having tanks is that you can just easily repair them as Imperial Dane is doing with his Luftwaffe right now you can easily just repair these tanks, no problem. You're not really spending that much in terms of uh, manpower. You do spend a little bit um, of manpower when you're repairing your tanks, but really not that much in comparison to how much you might be spending on on your reinforcement costs for your infantry. So I bet this is the one final attack. Just coming in. Can it do anything? Panzer IV still badly damaged, but it can at least move. That's the important thing. Already half health rifleman squad. Badly damaged rifleman squad. I bet Mr. Mateko is obviously seeing that this is not looking good whatsoever. He's really low on ammunition as well. Obviously having a very hard time even doing anything. He's just th he's throwing grenades rather than um, focusing on sticky bombs. And maybe... Not I'm not exactly sure what to think of that. I suppose he didn't need to get rid of the infantry. But then again, heavy, heavy casualties. Losing his ranger squad. He does not even have enough manpower to call on another ranger squad. So his own strategy, and that's the play about over. So his own little strategy that he must have uh, preemptively thought about um, not going to work at hand. So he obviously needs to be a bit more careful about what he did there. I think investing a bit too much into into, into uh, infantry might be a bit um, put you in a bad position. So if you're going to actually go for a heavy infantry, infantry strategy, what you really need to try and capitalize on is say a medic tent because at least you might be getting technically some sort of refund of all that manpower that you've been spending. Okay, but anyway, this was the first little game that I casted, used submitted. So, thank you again, Mr. Imperial Dane, for submitting this little replay. And then again, it's open to all of you guys to send in your replays. So, until next time, guys, have a nice day.